Hello, I'm Jennifer Ziello from the Immunohistochemistry Group at Cell Signaling Technology, and the data that I'll be showing today is focused on the detection of immune checkpoint receptors via highly multiplexed IHC assays. As seen in figures 1A and 1B, we used a tyramide-based fluorescent multiplex IHC assay in order to construct seven plex panels consisting of various immune checkpoint receptors, their ligands, and tumor and T-cell markers. In this assay, FFPE tissue sections are deparaffinized, rehydrated, rehydrated, and antigen retrieval is performed. The tissue is then incubated with a primary antibody. An HRP-conjugated secondary antibody is then added. The HRP enzyme then catalyzes the deposition of a tyramide fluorophore conjugate to the tyrosine residues on and surrounding the target. The tissue is then heated again for the purpose of removing the primary and secondary antibodies, which only form weak hydrogen bonds with their targets and cannot withstand a microwaving step. The tyramide fluorophore conjugate forms a covalent bond with the tyrosine residues upon which they are deposited and can withstand this heating step. Staining with this method is achieved in a sequential fashion in that after each of these heating steps, you are left only with the tyramide fluorophore conjugate remaining as the antibodies have been removed. At this point, you can incubate the tissue section with a distinct primary antibody and a distinct tyramide fluorophore conjugate, repeating the same basic steps. Once the tissue has been stained with all of the antibodies and their respective fluorophores, this tissue is imaged. A Mantra Quantitative Pathology workstation is used to acquire and spectrally unmix the signals in the final image. To date, we've used this technique to construct a myriad of panels, many IO-centric that are showcased here along the top, as well as several focused on the receptors involved in targeted therapies, such as the drugs Alcori and EGFR inhibitors. In order to examine immune checkpoint receptors indicative of T-cell exhaustion, we constructed a 7-plex panel consisting of PD-1, LAG-3, and TIM-3, along with CD-8 as a cytotoxic T-cell marker, and cytokeratin, which we used as a tumor cell mask. We used DAPI as a nuclear counterstain. As you can see, the patterns and localizations that we see in the fluorescent breakdowns are reflective of the chromogenic staining in serial sections of human tonsil, shown in figure 2a. When this panel was applied to a non-small cell lung carcinoma section, we can see quite a few CD8 positive T cells, as well as PD-1, TIM3, and LAG3 positive cells. When this image was analyzed quantitatively, we can see that while there are single and dual positive CD8 positive T cells present in this field, roughly 35% of the CD8 positive cells in this image are positive for all three of the immune ch checkpoint receptors, indicating that there are quite a few exhausted T cells in this tumor. This is a great way to break down an initially chaotic appearing image and utilize the information present in order to glean meaningful information. With multiplex images such as these, you can also glean proximity information in addition to co-localization and frequency data. For example, in the same non-small cell lung carcinoma section shown in figure 3a, you can see red CD68 positive macrophages along with magenta CD8 positive T cells wedged right up against cyan cytokeratin positive tumor cells in many cases. We can also visualize CD8 positive PD1 positive T cells in close proximity to CD68 positive PDL1 positive macrophages that may be indicative of interaction. Furthermore, in the ovarian carcinoma section shown in figure 3C, we can break this composite image apart and see the co-localization of PDL2 and cytokeratin, indicating that this ligand is being expressed in tumor cells, while PDL1 in certain areas is localizing to the tumor cells as well. These PDL1 positive cells are in close proximity to many CD68 positive macrophages. Finally, the immunosuppressive enzymes IDO and arginase-1 also seem to be co-localizing in certain cases, possibly on myeloid-derived suppressor cells, and in some cases on tumor cells themselves. Overall, these patterns of co-expression and proximity indicate an immunosuppressive tumor marker environment. From here, there are many additional targets that can be used in this type of assay, which, due to its ability to maintain the spatial context of the tumor microenvironment, can provide more in-depth understanding of the roles of various cell types in the process of immune evasion. All CST IHC validated antibodies are compatible with this protocol and can be used to construct similar panels. For more information, please visit cellsignal.com slash tumor immunology.